My favorite place to get a sandwich from would be Corner Bakery. Um, I would say Subway. Uh, they give you a whole combo um, where it's a sandwich, it's the drink, cookies, chips, and fruit. I think it's, really cool. it's affordable. I think it's really like, you know, a whole meal. But it's um, make it sandwiches. <laughs> but just, you know, the sandwich itself, they have different flavors and they're pretty good. Um, and it's convenient. <laughs> and they're not small, they're, I mean, they're just enough to fill you up. The sandwich is practically an American institution. It is a basic essential for lunch boxes, parties, and picnics. Go. People think that if they spend a bunch of money on commercials or fancy menus or something like that, that they'll win over the eating public and their tables will be filled with, you know, consumers. But the truth is, in my opinion, you get a lot more bang for your buck, you know, a lot more result from your efforts. If you take that same money, that same effort, it doesn't even have to be money, really, and dedicate that to a charity event. My name is Kipper Gray, G-R-A-Y. I am the, uh, the owner and operator of Kip's cheesesteak. <laughs> this is probably one of my favorite spots to come and come and eat. I've been coming here for um, a good five or five or six months now. Uh, ever since I knew about it, I was really into like the cheesesteaks and uh, just you know the way that um, uh, they cut their meat and slice it. And uh, they also, I think their rolls are actually shipped um, from. I know there are ships from out of state somewhere. I did a lot of market research. I did, you know, studies where I would go around and ask people, you know, what are you looking for in a, in a restaurant? Well, what do you eat, basically? And overwhelmingly, people, soup, salad, and sandwich was like the, the biggest thing. Well, I don't know how to make soups. So salads and sandwiches, we decided was a, was a hit. And cheesesteaks was just a lack of competition. I mean, it's a nationally known food. Like if I say tacos, you got Taco Bell or, you know, Del Taco or whatever. If I say burgers, you got about a half a dozen you could name. Hot dogs, you got Wiener Schnitzel. Whereas if I said cheesesteaks, you might name a couple of regional names, Charlie's or, or whatever else, but there's no real solid representative of someone who can make cheesesteaks, especially out here in El Paso. So, you know, you hit it where they ain't, you know, and that's how you get on base. So we, uh, Lack of competition and you know, lack of any real culinary knowledge led me to cheese things. I'll take that one. Trade me. See, part of being so small is we have very little space. Restaurant business is easy, man. You make 20,000 friends, you have me to come and give you $10 every couple of months. You know? Simple. Maybe a barbecue filling? Provolone or cheese whiz? Um, no cheese. No cheese. With um, peppers? Add bell pepper. I won't charge you for that one because you, you took out the cheese. I can add in some bell peppers. And Believe it or not, even though we're just a small business, we do have a, a mission statement, you know, and that is to consistently exceed the expectations of our customers. And since those expectations are ever increasing, we have to be just as diligent about blowing them right out of the water. I mean, if you expect to be told, Hello, how you doing once? We're going to say it three times. You know, if you expect to sit down at clean tables, I will shine your shoes as you sit there. I mean, it's, it's one of those things to where if you continually go, wow, this is fast food, and that guy's over there singing, and, you know, he, the, the owner's just mopping the floor. I saw him. I mean, if you, if, you, if you take the constructs that people have set in their mind and you just blow them right out of the water and show people that there is no normal as far as how you should be treated, that's, that's the thing I get more often than not. They go, wow, the customer service in this place is outrageous because I treat every single person like they're my mom or my dad, you know, some better, I charge my mom. 
I think overwhelmingly El Pasoans said they, they would support a local restaurant over a national chain. But the truth is, you know, where the rubber hits the road, they're going to chains over local restaurants nine times out of ten. And when asked why, they would tell you, well, it's because they can deliver on consistent food and a clean, comfortable environment. So I mean, yeah. Those are the people trying to get in a seat. The worst part of the whole thing, I think, is when you first go through that door, they have the rail set up to like like guide you to the register, which is right there at the front anyways, like, like you're human cattle. And then you get there, and you pay money, and they give you a drink, right? Then after that, you go a bit further down the line, and there's a dude who goes like, whoa, hold the f*** up. And you're like, what the hell, I paid my money, and I, I'm civil, I know what I'm doing, I have... I have some intelligence to me, man. You don't, you don't have to be so rude about it. And while they tear to hold, they have like two other people hovering behind this dude with walkie-talkies, like coordinating where they're gonna sit you. And I mean, it feels like you're literally being rounded up and like herded to like wherever the hell they're gonna take you. And so you're standing there waiting with your drink in hand after you've paid. It's like, this is a crowded-ass restaurant. If I already paid and it's full, what the hell are they gonna tell me? Big business and small business, you know, it's really, really necessary to have both. Um, it's getting harder and harder for small business these days, you know, to compete with the, with the big guys, you know, these, these big nationally conglomerate businesses that, you know, have a location on every corner and limitless budgets for advertising and marketing their, their, their services and product. People that first come to Subway are a little surprised we don't have sandwiches ready, just fresh bread. That's so you can see your sandwich being made and tell me if you like onions, tomatoes, or even hot peppers. I'm not a mind reader, and there's lots to choose from. If your sandwich looks as good as it tastes, that's because Subway has a training center where experts like Mr. Pilchin teaches the art of making beautiful sandwiches. He calls himself an art teacher. I guess that makes me a sandwich artist. I want you to do something. Not doing that again. I burned. We both enjoyed that. Now I want you But at the same time, they're, they're very necessary in the sense that they employ a lot of people. You know, but the soul of any city, kind of tying back into our last, our last conversation, the soul of any city is its small business. You know, if, if an Applebee's opened up downtown, there wouldn't be much fanfare. It would just be another Applebee's. It would go silently about its day employing 30 people and, and do its thing. But if a, if a place like Kipps, when they open up, it has the ability to change the entire character of an area, whereas that's something that big business won't have. My name is Angie. I work here at Kipps. I'm part of the counter staff, so sometimes I cook or sometimes um, I'm in the middle, sometimes I do the register like Kip, but most of the time I'm, you know, just kind of the Jill of all trades. With the people I hire, I'm looking for someone who can stand on their own two feet. You know, they have to have a sense of pride in what they do. Um, I don't I want some intelligent people in there that can think for themselves. Initiative is very important. You know, that's, that's always key. You know, if, if you want a place where you can go and you can draw a paycheck, there's a million different big restaurants that would be happy to have you. Whereas down here, we require a little bit more of you, but at the same time, you get a little bit more in return. I actually am originally from Michigan, so I worked at a restaurant there, and it was really different. So instead of a democracy, it was kind of like a dictatorship, you know? Not to be like, <laughs> I don't know, blunt, but that's kind of how it is. But Kip like involves us in the restaurant. It's part of our restaurant too. It's not just his, it's what he tells us. So it's really cool. I teach them about the business. It's not just I lock the drawer up and don't tell them. But I mean, if they want to learn about bookkeeping, I'll teach them about the bookkeeping. So it's not just your typical college kid restaurant job. You can make it as much or as little as you want. You know, I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's not, it's not where you work that defines you. It's, it's how you work. I have a Series 7 license, so I uh, was qualified to trade stocks, financial advising. I was buying and selling real estate, you know, I have uh, I was in the finance uh, business for a while before the great collapse of 2000 and whatever it was, but, you know, all those things, although very lucrative, were 
also really not all that rewarding. You know, at the end of the day, I kept thinking that it was money that I wanted. You know, I want, I want to go out and make as much as I possibly can, and that way I'll be happy. But the truth is, you're never really going to be happy in life if that's what you're going after. And if you set out in a pursuit to, to just earn money, well, then that's all you'll ever really get out of it is money. And, you know, I wanted a little bit more than that. So I, I opened Kips with the whole idea that, you know, I wouldn't make it about the money. I'd make it about giving it away to the people and having a good time with it. As a result, well, we're doing okay. I love it here. Kip's a really good boss. My favorite is the the hot chick, and they actually make that with uh, with chicken instead of the um, the, the ribeye. So it's it's a different take on it, and it's spicy too. So it's good for all. So I think I think the truth is is it it really all boils down to a to kind of an attitude, a mindset that I have when it came to any job I've ever had, and that's friends first. You know, for example, if if you were to ask your friend for ten dollars, they'd probably give it to you, right? I mean, hey, hey buddy, give me ten bucks. Whereas if you ask a perfect stranger for ten dollars, take a long walk up a short pier. No, they don't know you. So the, the business construct, what I saw in a lot of these different restaurants, is they were going through the motions, hi sir, how are you today? Not really meaning it. You know, I mean, they would say, is everything going good? Great. Without even listening for an answer. So countless customer service experiences like this over and over again. I just decided, you know what, when I asked someone, hey, how's it going? I was going to meet it, you know, so that was kind of the point there. So it wasn't necessarily just one instance, just an overall fall off, falling off of the level of, you know, attention that people were giving to their customers. And I decided that I was going to be a part of the, the solution at that point.